everybody. My name is Russell Hughes. I'm an instructor here at Sunset Learning. Today I'm going to be talking about Cisco 6VPE or VPN Provider Edge in MPLS. As they show in this case right here, 6VPE can be compared to a regular IPv4 VPN tunnel through an MPLS cloud. The idea being is that we've got to use double labeling within here to be able to send information. One of the big problems with using MPLS for an IPv6 network is that MPLS relies upon an underlying IPv4 internal gateway protocol. So the idea is that we've got to be able to communicate a v6 network across this MPLS cloud. So what we'll see in this case right over here is that we need some way of being able to logically separate the routing tables of all of our different customers that are out there. And this is why we're utilizing then a VPN in our MPLS environment. As I show, it's still deployed over an existing IPv4 backbone. And the idea in this case is so that the service providers themselves don't have to worry about going through and setting up IPv6 on every single device that they've actually got. So, as you keep on going, what we'll see in this case right over here, for Cisco 6 VPE, we've got the provider edge routers that are out over here that have got a BGP session back and forth between the two. And, and in this case, a, and a full mesh type of environment between all the different provider edge and devices. The P routers in the middle, the provider core routers, have absolutely no visibility to IPv6 whatsoever. So what we've got to do is we're going to run an internal gateway protocol, ISIS or OSPF in most case scenarios, that you'll be utilizing to be able to get from provider edge to provider edge. Right? Learning how to get to the loopback interfaces of each one of these PE routers that are out here. As we eventually then learn routes from a customer, this could be via either static routes or a dynamic routing protocol. It could be an internal gateway protocol or even BGP. As I learn that route via IPv6, what we're going to do is we're going to advertise that information across this IPv4 network via BGP. What we'll see is the BGP next top IP address that we actually assign to it will be an IPv4 mapped address. Okay? So when you look at an IPv4 mapped address, what you'll see within there is that it'll look something similar to a colon, colon, F, 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 colon, and then the IP address, 192.168.1.1 of the loopback interface that we've got. As it advertises information to the other side, they eventually learn how to get to that network by reaching this next top IP address. I can look easily into this next top IP address to what the IPv4 address of the next top router is. As I go through and do that, and then we'll eventually use our internal gateway protocol on how do I reach that loopback address on the other end. Okay? So as a packet comes through and is destined for this particular network, what you're going to see happening is a regular IPv6 packet. So I've got an IPv6 packet. As it comes into the provider edge, that provider edge is going to add in two different labels to that packet. So we'll have our IPv6 packet. We'll eventually then have within our labels within here, two different labels. The first label, what they call the bottom label, is to specify what VPN we've got on the other end. Okay? So once this router on the end has to go through and do a layer 3 lookup to determine what, how do we actually reach this individual network out over here, it's looking at this particular label to determine which VPN, or in this case, which VRF should it be looking at to find out how to get to that destination network. So I'm going to write out VRF in this case, a virtual route forwarder is what that actual label for MPLS is. Eventually then I'm going to put in a top label on there. And the top label is to specify how do we actually traverse this MPLS network to get to the provider edge on the other end. Okay? So we'll see that this top label in this case is an IPv4 MPLS label that tells us how to get to the provider edge on the other side of our service provider network. As we send that packet across this network, the P routers are actually looking at just the top label, and they're swapping that top label on how to actually reach the provider edge on the other end. As it reaches the 6P VPE provider edge on the other side, they're going to strip off this top label and look at the bottom label so that they can determine which VRF do they have to do a layer 3 lookup for to be able to reach this internal IPv6 network. Kind of complicated, but it's very similar to what you'd normally see in an IPv4 VPN tunnel. Okay? Two different labels. The first label is specifying what are we going to use and what VRF do we do a layer 3 lookup for. The second label, or the top label, is really utilized so that all these P routers can make sure that they can traverse the MPLS cloud and get it to the PE router on the other end. 
So as they show in this case right over here, on this 6VPE router, I've got it set up to where on my interface, I've gone through and created a, a forwarding interface, and I've given myself an IPv6 address for it as well. So when I've assigned that interface to be a part of the VRF, called customer A in this case. As we go through and configure the rest of these, they show we'll have to enable IPv6 routing, make sure that not only do we have unicast routing turned on, but we also have Cisco Express forwarding turned on. It is a requirement to be able to run Cisco VP. We'll have to go through and configure then multi-protocol BGP. And this will be configured between the different provider edges at the edge of our service provider network. Once we have our multi-protocol BGP session set up, then we'll go through and configure a customer's VRF. The VRF that we're going to be using in this case is going to be for IPv6. We'll see that eventually we'll have to add in the interfaces that are part of that customer's network to be a part of that VRF. Anytime we add an interface to be a part of the VRF, we need to remember that it's also going to remove all layer 3 attributes. So you're going to see things like all of our IP addressing is going to be completely removed from that interface. So we're going to have to reassign then our, our IP addresses. Eventually then we're going to have to have some way of being able to route to that customer's network. Now that could be any kind of routing protocol, so we can actually run, run an internal gateway protocol. We could use BGP as an external gateway protocol. You could also use static routes if this is the only connection that this customer has. Eventually then what you'll see is I'm going to take and learn their routes via their internal gateway protocol. I'm going to redistribute it into BGP so I can carry that across the MPLS cloud. And on the other end, when it reaches the other provider edge, they'll redistribute back into the same routing protocol. Okay? So if we learn to route via OSPF from the customer, I'll redistribute that OSPF route into BGP. Eventually then that BGP route is going to be redistributed back into OSPF at the other end of that cloud. So they go through and they show us a little bit of a configuration of our 6 VPE in this case right here. And really dealing with the provider edge. The P router in the middle really has nothing special done to it. Okay? It's got MPLS turned on on its two interfaces and it's running an internal gateway protocol so that it can communicate its IPv4 routes that we learn with inside our own service provider network. At the provider edge then, they go through and they first off create a VRF. Okay? Now if you've never seen a VRF that's used for IPv4 and IPv6, it's a slightly different configuration. So what we've got to do is go into global config and under global config we'll say VRF definition and then we name our VRF. We're going to call this one VPNA. Typically it's based off of the customer name, but in this case we're going to use VPNA. Underneath here we have to specify what our route distinguisher is going to be. And we utilize these route distinguishers to make sure, and you see it quite a bit when you start dealing with IPv4 and private addressing in IPv4, so that we could have one customer using the 10 network and a completely different customer also using the exact same subnets. How do we keep those completely separate? Well, the way we do that is when we learn a route via MPLS, we'll add in this route distinguisher so that we can actually go through and say, hey, this particular route is for this VRF that we're going to be utilizing. We then have what are known as route targets. Route targets can be exported into another VRF if we wish. It allows for route leaking. A lot of service providers use that for uh, communication between uh, different sites in your own VPN and also having communication to utilize that MPLS network outbound to the internet as well. So in this case, we got both a route target for both import and export of being the exact same number as our route distinguisher. May or may not be the exact same number, but typically is to begin with. Then we'll go through, as we become neighbors back and forth between the two PE devices, we're going to have to go through and set up our BGP. So I've gone through and communicated, uh, set up router BGP in Autonomous System 64512. I then have to set up my neighbor. Now notice my neighbor is an IPv4 address in this neighbor relationship right over here. So as we communicate, this is going to be a BGP session across an IPv4 session. Okay. They eventually then go through and say, as we communicate to that neighbor, make sure that we're sending our source IP address using our loopback zero interface. It's the neighbor IP address that we're utilizing. Eventually then, I've got to go into the address family for VPN v6 so that we can become neighbors for the VPN network. I eventually then activate that neighbor in the VPN v6. And because we're going to be using community strings in here to be able to advertise the IPv6 networks, we need to make sure that we're sending both standard and extended community strings. So I'm going through and saying when I send to this neighbor, to 10.1.1.4, send both of our community strings, both standard and extended. 
I eventually then have to go into the address family for IPv6 VRF VPNA, and I will redistribute then all of the connected routes that we've got. The reason they're redistributing our connected routes is they have now a static route to that neighbor relationship. To get to their route, so I've got an IPv6 route that uses VRF called VPNA. To get to this destination network, the 2003 colon 430 colon 210 colon 1 colon colon slash 64 network, I use our inter local interface serial 2 slash 0. Now, they are actually missing two extra commands that need to, are, uh, need to be added to be able to make this work. Underneath the address family for IPv, uh, IPv6 VPNA, we need to go through and specify our neighbor 10.1.1.4 in this case. And again, remote as 64512. Okay? And we'll have to activate that neighbor as well. So I'll have to go through over here. Again, I'm going to add it down on the bottom over here. Neighbor 10.1.1.4, active. Okay, so that we activate that neighbor underneath that VPN for that particular user. So we've got to become neighbors not only in the global BGP table, but also neighbors underneath that VPN VRF as well. On the other end, we've got to do the exact same thing. So on this router over here, I'm on the PE2 in this case. Again, I've created our VRF. Typically, you want to make sure that they're using the exact same name, that they don't necessarily have to. As long as the route distinguisher matches on both sides, it's going to work. Okay? Again, what we need to make sure that we're doing within this case right over here, if they're exporting a route target of 100 colon 100, we need to import that same information so that we can learn routes over here and, and, and put them into the right VRF on the other end. Likewise, as I export using 100 colon 100, they import 100 colon 100 on the other end. I eventually create, create a BGP neighbor relationship, in this case to the loopback address of PE1. So in this case, the 10.1.1.1 address, which should be the loopback interface that we have over here on PE1. I need to make sure that I'm sending all my BGP updates using the correct source IP address. So I specify my source IP address should be our own loopback zero interface. I go under the address family for VPN v6 and activate that neighbor, making sure that we're sending both of those community strings, both our extended and our standard community strings. Eventually, then I have to go into the address family for IPv6 VRF called VPNA that we've got, and I'm going to redistribute my information. Again, it could be redistributing an internal gateway protocol, in this case, redistributing a directly connected route, because my static route is pointed to a local interface in this case. And again, we're going to have to add in those exact same two commands over here. So I'm going to have to specify my neighbor of 10.1.1.1 in the remote AS of 64,512 underneath this address family, and also activate that neighbor underneath that address family as well. This is going to then allow us to create this VPN tunnel. So I've got a VPN tunnel now between these two routers that shares information about these customer networks on their interfaces. So this is an example of using static routes. What we're going to do is we're also going to show you how to go through and set this up using an internal gateway protocol as well. So let me show a couple other commands that we're missing in here as well, just to make sure that we have it set up. Obviously, you need to make sure that you're actually running the IPv6 unicast routing. If you don't have this set up, it won't allow you to do any of the address family for IPv6 commands under BGP. We said we need to make sure that we're turning on IPv6 Ceph so that we can do things during hardware. I have to create my VPN VRF definition that we're utilizing. Okay? So you specify VRF definition and you name that VRF definition. We need to then activate that VRF for the IPv6 address family. So we'll say address-family IPv6. We can also say address-family IPv4 to use this VRF for both IPv4 routes and IPv6 routes of that customer. We mentioned that underneath that VRF, we need to make sure that we have a route distinguisher. And that route distinguisher is how we keep track of all the routes that are learned from one VRF versus routes learned from a completely different VRF. Eventually, then need to make sure that we've got a route target of how we're actually going to send that information. We did both an import and export of the exact same uh, uh, route target as our route distinguisher. But you can also put it in as one single command, route-target both 100 colon 100 as well. Those are the, that information, that route distinguisher and these route targets are what we're utilizing.
recognizing as community strings in BGP to be able to announce that information from one network to another network. I eventually then have to go into an interface of a customer. And on that interface, I'll go through and assign that interface to be a part of that VPN. So I go into that interface and I say VRF40, VPN underscore A is the name of our VRF that we created earlier. Remember, anytime we assign an interface to be a part of a VRF, I then have to reassign all my layer 3 addressing to it. Eventually then, I have to go in, configure BGP between the different PE routers themselves, become neighbors back and forth, making sure I'm sending all my information using the correct source IP address, typically our loopback address in a provider network like this. I need to go under the address family for VPN v6 and activate that neighbor and making sure that we're sending those community strings. Eventually then have to go into the address family for the IPv6 VRF called VPNA that we've got. And again, redistribute our information. We could redistribute static, we could redistribute connected routes, we could redistribute from OSPF or RIP or EIGRP. Again, remembering that we're going to have to add in this command right over here, the remote AS and the activate command underneath the address family for IPv6 VRF VPNA. And some of the show commands that we can use to verify that it's working correctly is we can actually go through and look at our routing tables for that specific VRF. Remember that when, when we start to utilize these virtual route forwarders, that each VRF has its own separate routing table. So show IPv6 route will only show the global routing table. If we want to look at the routing information that we learned from this customer, we have to do a show IPv6 route, VRF, VPN underscore A. Okay. Like I said, we can also look at things like our BGP table. What are we learning via BGP between the two PE routers on that particular VRF? So the command itself is a show BGP, VPN v6, unicast, VRF, VPN underscore A is the command. And you'll see your BGP table from that particular VRF. You can also look at your running config as well. You do a show running config VRF in the name of your running config. Displays all the interfaces that are assigned to that VRF. And that's pretty much what we've got as far as Cisco 6 VPE.